You know, I wanted to take a moment and just uh, share with you a bit of a background uh, of what produced breaking free from financial bondage. And we know that in this workbook, we are covering four areas. The problem, uh, I need a financial blessing. The promise, there is a way out. Uh, the principle, the Luke 6, 38 stewardship principle. And the plan, uh, cooperative economics. And for me, uh, each one of these four areas connect to each other. For if you have a problem, I believe you must, must seek for a, uh, a promise of God and attach yourself uh, to that promise. And promise leads to principles. And once you follow those principles, the following inevitably will lead you into a plan. Now, let's go back to that problem area. Someone viewing me right now may be facing foreclosure, may be considering bankruptcy, your family is breaking up because you're not tied to anything that can turn the misery of the problem into a miracle. And that is what uh, disturbed me when I would uh, be doing uh, the Crusade for Christ uh, radio talk show over some 52 radio stations that uh, Bishop Ellie Willis owned and at 4 o'clock in the evening while persons were riding down the road uh, on their way home they would tune in uh, to what I felt as though was a lifeline and they would be bold enough to make that request over 80% of the prayer requests um, would entail what I uh, have indicated as the first chapter, I need a financial blessing. They were going through some misery, had, ha having worked all day long, but now facing the misery of that problem. They just needed some more money. Well, we elucidate in the chapter as to uh, the basis of such a request. Uh, being mismanagement, uh, but the boldness in releasing that cry uh, to more than six, seven, eight million people. Uh, I know uh, um, the, the veil of radio um, would sort of protect a person uh, just in case any of their family members were listening or some of their me uh, uh, family members or friends or um, possibly even some of their co-workers and, or, or even the person who, who uh, held their mortgage or uh, the attorney they were talking to to get uh, direction relative to their um, bankruptcy uh, alternative. But uh, either problems will make you stay and waddle in misery or to seek a, mir a miracle. And in seeking the miracle, that, that's why I am uh, interesting in you in getting a copy of this Breaking Free from Financial Bondage, because miracles are attached to the promises of God. Uh, they can happen extraordinarily, you know, out of the rim. But um, I believe if you want to assure yourself of breaking free, problems should lead you to a promise and that is the that, that's the pathway we are seeking um, as I'm emphasizing this background information to you uh, because problems uh, somewhat uh, uh, take hold to uh, another 
teaching our Lord had. You remember when he said, ask, um, uh, knock, and seek. Well, uh, promises will have you searching for an answer if, if you want God to turn some situations around. And the best area I know for a turnaround is to attach yourself to a promise, a promise of God. And there are many promises of God. Uh, but for your unique problem of needing a financial blessing, uh, you, you ought to start wallowing or, 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 or get wrapped, tied, and tangled up in um, the search of God's promises which are aligned with financial breakthroughs. Um, in a real sense, uh, problems say um, seek, seek for an answer. And Mr. Promise starts inviting you, inviting you into its, 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 its house. You come up on the front porch, you knock on the door, and there is an opening that takes place. Because in my own searchings, I have found that problems can lead to promises. Promises inevitably talk back to you. They give you a, a, a new level of assurance that what I'm passing through now can, um, can have another side to it. And I believe the other side of a problem is its promise to, to relieve you. Now, promises will give you an experience. They will give you a testimony. They will tell you about side A, and now that you're on this other side, side B, which B could represent um, blessed. So the other side of a problem uh, uh, can be um, passed through cost of a promise. So ask. Ask the promise what can it do for your problem. Uh, knock on the door of a promise and see if anybody's home. And the Lord of promises, I believe, will enable that promise to tell you to come on in. Come on in and once you get inside of a promise. A promise has a way of unpacking your problems and let you see the other side. Right right now the sun is shining in my face and, and I just feel as though uh, uh, problems have a way of darkening the sun to enter in. But once you find the entrance into the world of a promise, uh, it has a way of uh, brightening up things and and and, and the brightest um, I think area that a promise will uh, provide is that it will give you a principle and, and now all of us uh, have at least one or two principles that we follow uh, we follow good principles or we follow bad principles but um, uh, prob uh, problems uh, make us unprincipled. Promises take the unprincipled us and places the assurance of the promise right there. And promise has a way of saying, trust what I stand on myself. Because no promise stand alone. There is a principle underlying it, a principle as its foundation that upholds it, that sustains it. And, and for us, the Luke 638 stewardship principle is uh, the attitude of a promise uh, being measured for our lives. It says, give. <laughs> It's just like God. God so loved the world that he gave, give, and it, whatever that it is, that, that promise seemingly is just um, a beckoning 
and saying bye-bye to the problem that I had you all in its clutches. It, the principle inevitably says, um, trust me. Uh, trust, trust what I say. It shall be given unto you. And, and if you follow my principle, it, it, it will take you in some areas you never thought you would enter into. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. For with the same measure or the same standard that you use uh, in getting out of your uh, problem and attaching itself uh, to a promise, that same measure you use, it will be measured back to you. It, it will pay off for you. And that, that, that's the principle. And, and, and if you practice the principle long enough, uh, it will end up providing some precipitation. <laughs> It'll start raining in your life. And, uh, and, and I not only mean R-A-I-N-I-N-G, but R-E-I-G-N-I-N-G. It'll start raining in your life. And when the principle of God pushed by the promise of God, um, running away from the problem. That inevitably has given you a new testimony and a new understanding as to why I even went through this valley and this shadow that the problem has presented. A plan will inevitably evolve. Um, now we've always planned. We've we planned to do wrong. Uh, how long did it take you to plan, plan what you were going to wear, plan what you were going to uh, drink when you were out in the world. Some of you may be out of the world right now, but we do, we make great plans to satisfy ourselves. I think one of the greatest things that can be entered into is a plan that will never allow you to waddle again in the problem of financial lack, especially when the promises of God has told you you don't belong there and the principle of God will not allow you to stay. The plan of God for your life is one of the great attitudes of God that you should abide in. For in his attitude you can find your purpose and when his purpose is being carried out in your life it is one of the greatest experiences of life that you could ever have. So I'm grateful to have given you a bit of a background, but, but practically, let, 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 let me say this. Um, uh, in that plan, uh, cooperative economics, um, my doctoral dissertation is of high importance here. Um, when I was at Howard University and, and uh, my doctor of ministry degree needed a project uh, in order for, uh, to be the undergirding of my uh, dissertation. I was already involved in my um, city during the uh, Reagan budget cuts of uh, 1981. And the Social Service Bureau called a meeting because some 600 families were, could no longer be covered with uh, special emergency services. Um, so they needed some kind of way, some kind of network created uh, along with the church community to offset the $280,000 that it had lost for those emergency services within the city. We came together and formed what became an award-winning um, project in the city of Chesapeake, Virginia, uh, the Chesapeake Resource Network where churches and other help agencies, along with the Social Service Bureau, uh, bridged the gap. And we enabled those 600 families to fare well once uh, their welfare uh, had taken a turn and enabled them to literally begin to stand up on their own two feet. But they needed uh, a help first. And it was out of that uh, help that I was involved in, that uh, cooperative economics came out as this plan that um, I'm highly suggesting that you um, take a walk through. I've alluded uh, in chapter 4 
uh, of this uh, nucleus uh, of the Chesapeake Resource Network. And I trust that you would read it. And um, uh, even if you would love to read my dissertation, it would be of a great help. Uh, because I did, uh, I did become uh, 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 a doctor of ministry as a result of um, just serving, just serving. Uh, so, let, lest I keep going on and on and on, if you have a problem, attach it to a promise. And let that uh, promise begin to nurture you so that you will end up living a more principled life. And that principled life will ultimately give you a plan that um, I know it will please you to come from under the doldrums of that problem and um, live the kind of life God has originally ordained. So I trust that you will enjoy the reading and the workbook nature of uh, breaking free from financial bondage and uh, I'll be sending you some pictures as to the growth and the development in the building process of uh, the Philadelphia Fellowship's House of Worship and Ministry Center and trust that you will be able uh, to come on in there yourself and to take a look uh, at that building to see what progress a Jubilee seed of $50 will be able to do. It will go a long way once it is attached to the right kind of, of four-pronged measurement that is biblically based. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in and uh, uh, read the rest of this book and let's uh, see how God shall turn our problems uh, into miracles. Okay, God bless. <laughs>